House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy threw a nearly nine-hour tantrum on the House floor as Democrats passed their signature social spending bill. Meanwhile, one Republican senator continued to spread Trump's big lie about the election, and another accused a Biden nominee of being a communist. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. There was a temptation during his presidency to believe that Donald Trump and the fringe movement of goons and weirdos who supported him were not necessarily the core of the modern GOP, that once Trump faded away, the party would return to some semblance of normalcy. But over and over, Republicans keep proving how naive and wrong that assumption was. And look, I get it. I think lots of people were hoping this would be a Beetlejuice situation where we could just say his name three times and he would disappear into that waiting room where he'd <laughs> finally look like he fits in. We love, we love shrunken head guy, don't we, folks? We don't talk about him enough. Regular body, regular clothes, tiny head. <laughs> and of course, what a seat next to the great Gina Davis, League of Their Own. What a film, what a film. <laughs> they say there's no crying in baseball, but when Kit plowed into Dottie and she dropped the ball, I'll admit I had a little bit of dust in my eye. Anyhow, <laughs> by the way, we're trying a new transitional word today instead of anyway. Are you delivering a comedic digest of the day's news? Did you get stuck in a nonsensical tangent and need a way back to the politics, but used anyway too many times? Try anyhow. <laughs> anyhow, Trump did not disappear, and even if he did, the brand of politics he represented is very much alive and well within the GOP, and not just among some obscure lunatics in the House. Texas Senator Ted Cruz was just on CBS this weekend, continuing to spread the big lie that there was widespread fraud in the 2020 election and defend his role in trying to overturn the results on January 6th. I brought together a group of 11 senators, and we objected to call for, a, for an electoral commission to review yeah. the claims of voter fraud and to assess and make a determination to consider the evidence, which I think would have been much better for our democracy because we right now have a substantial chunk of our country that has real doubts about the integrity of the election. And if we had had a credible yeah. electoral commission do an emergency audit, it would have enhanced faith in democracy. But instead, okay. Democrats and a lot of the press decided to just engage in incendiary rhetoric rather than acknowledge voter fraud is real, it is a problem. Well, do you have and, and, and I the ask allegations of voter fraud needed to be examined on the merits? All right, first of all, over 60 cases did examine the evidence, and not one found any merit in any of Trump's claims. That includes judges appointed by Trump and the GOP-dominated Supreme Court. You think a judge appointed by Trump himself would turn down the opportunity to help out? They were probably getting nonstop texts from him begging for help like an ex who won't go away. <laughs> Seriously, did you forget about all that? I mean, how could you? Rudy Giuliani is probably still standing outside the Supreme Court banging on the front door like a guy who just got evicted from his apartment for hoarding cats. Hey, those aren't my pets. Those are my law partners. <laughs> you can't do this to Whiskers, Whiskers, Giuliani, and Klein. And look, it's not like Republicans stopped looking for voter fraud after Biden's election was certified. CNN reported back in October that a week after the 2020 election, Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick announced that he was offering up to $1 million to incentivize, encourage, and reward people to come forward and report voter fraud. Nearly a year later, Patrick, a Republican, has paid out his first reward, $25,000, to a Democrat in Pennsylvania who reported a Republican who, after voting once, attempted to vote a second time as his son. <laughs> That's right. Patrick had to pay the reward to a registered Democrat who reported a Republican who was 72 years old for trying to vote a second time as his son. How does a 72-year-old man try and vote as his son? Does he put on a dark baseball hat and Rayman sunglasses? I don't know, let's take a look at the article. Oh, that is what he did, all right. <laughs> Probably made a big show of it, too. Voting is for squares, like my dad, but for an election this important, I guess I can live with being lame for once. <laughs> Where's the nearest skateboard park? <laughs> I'm 51. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. The GOP is still very much devoted to Trump and his brand, whether it's spreading the big lie that the 2020 election was stolen or embodying the ideology and performance of Trump is, and the unhinged conspiracy mongering and dark implications of a hidden plot or sinister enemies around every corner. In fact, the GOP is so morally and intellectually bankrupt, they've circled all the way back to accusing people of being secret communists, Joe McCarthy style. An outrageous turn during an already contentious confirmation hearing Thursday. Republican Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana suggesting the nominee, who grew up in a country that was still under Soviet Union control, might still support communist policy. Saul Amarova is President Biden's pick to be comptroller of the currency. I don't mean any disrespect. I, I don't know whether to call you professor or comrade. Oh, my goodness. 
Senator, I'm not a communist. I do not subscribe to that ideology. I could not choose where I was born. My family suffered under the communist regime. I came to this country. I'm proud to be an American. And this is why I'm here today, Senator. That's Louisiana Senator John Kennedy, who went to Oxford and used to be a Democrat, but has since adopted the voice and mannerisms of a slow-talking, suspender-wearing alligator from a Disney movie who threatens to drain the bayou and replace it with a shopping mall. Well, well, well what have we got here? This swamp will make a mighty fine Chick-fil-A if I do say so myself. <laughs> also, you know you've taken a real villain turn when someone gasps off camera and reacts to your line of questioning the way soap opera characters react when an evil twin shows up. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's the evil John Kennedy. <laughs> worst, worst part of my day today, Wally, old cue card Wally goes, hey, you gonna be okay remembering the evil John Kennedy? You need a second set of cards over the other camera. <laughs> I'm fine, bro. <laughs> Crushed it. Yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> and by the way, a fellow Senator Democrat, Tina Smith of Minnesota, confirmed that it was her who said, oh my goodness, off camera, writing on Twitter, that person off camera is me, and what I was really thinking was holy <laughs> Which is appropriate, because the rest of Kennedy's questions were also holy <laughs> For example, Earlier in that same exchange, Kennedy asked her if she had formally resigned from a mandatory school organization in a country that no longer exists. You used to be a member of a group called the Young Communist, didn't you? Senator, uh, are you referring to my membership in the youth communist organization while I was growing up in the Soviet Union? I don't know. I, was, I just I wanted to ask you that question. Everybody in that country was a member of the Komsomol, which was the communist youth organization. Because so, so you, that were, was, you were a member? That was a part of normal progress in school. Um, did you, have you resigned? From the youth, From the young communists? You grow out of it with age, automatically. Did, did, you, did, you, did you send them a letter, though, resigning? Senator, this was many, many years ago, as far as I remember how the Soviet Union worked, was at a certain age, you automatically stop being a well, member could, of the Could you look at your records and see if you can find a copy? <clears throat> I'm sorry, do you think school children keep records <laughs> that include copies of letters they sent? If they did, I'd still have all the letters I sent Wendy Hughes asking her what Aaron Matthews had that I didn't, and even worse, I'd have copies of her response. <laughs> but sure, she should write a formal letter of resignation to a country that no longer exists. And while she's doing that, maybe you can write a letter resigning from, I don't know, Boss Hogg's gang? <laughs> this is what the unhinged Republican Party is now. You can see the same hysterical performance last week from House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy, who staged a nearly nine-hour meltdown on the House floor over the Democrats' social spending bill, which, among other radical socialist ideas, provides funding for universal pre-K, extends the new child tax credit, mandates paid family leave, and expands Medicare to include hearing aids. All that stuff is apparently so unacceptable to McCarthy, he lost his mind in a tantrum that went past 5 a.m. while being heckled by Democrats from the back row. He delayed that vote with a long, very long, super long speech. It lasted a record-breaking eight hours and 32 minutes. This is the single most reckless and irresponsible spending bill in our nation's history. I can look anywhere I want, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I cannot believe the amount of control one party rule wants. They now want to dictate to a member of the floor of where I can look. You ever eaten one of these baby carrots? I'll lead you in a little secret. There's no such thing. They're just big carrots. They chop them. They charge you more and you buy them. I have a friend who serves in the Senate. Right before COVID, he was on a Codell with other senators. And he was sitting and having a communication. Maybe you've experienced this as well. With a military general in the Chinese Communist Army. You know what that general said to him? America, you're weak. 
McCarthy's got the amped up energy of a fifth grader telling you about a classmate. I have a friend and his name is Timmy and he went to the zoo and met a donkey and the donkey took a big poop and it was so funny. <laughs> Seriously, what was the point of that story? I feel like I zoned out during an anecdote at a dinner party and now I have to catch up to figure out what the hell he's talking about. Uh-huh, oh yeah, well, so they kicked you out for having too many cats? And now I have no one to help me type out my lawsuit. <laughs> they even took Klein. Is this true about the baby carrots or just big carrots they cut up? <laughs> What about baby corn? <laughs> Seems like it should be consistent across all the vegetables. <laughs> Hell of a way to find out, that's all I'll say. <laughs> the only fun anyone got out of this demented spectacle was getting the chance to heckle McCarthy, like when Ohio Congressman Tim Ryan yelled at him from the back, keep going, no one's listening, and then, <laughs> Yesterday, McCarthy went on one of Fox News' most deranged shows with Maria Bartiromo to be congratulated for going off the deep end while whining about Democrats interrupting him. Congratulations. How is your voice doing after eight and a half hours speaking? You know, my voice is still strong because it's still strong for the American people. You know, um, when I went to the floor, I had no idea we would speak that long. It wasn't about a breaking the record. It was about breaking down this bill and the amount of heckling that they would try to do to stop me from being able to talk. I never thought I'd talk that long, but right before I went on the floor, I got this very jarring news about baby carrots. <laughs> this guy's such a goober. He sounds like a substitute teacher complaining to the principal that his high school class won't stop chucking things at him. I got hit with a spitball, a paper airplane, then fully knocked out with a stapler, and then when I came to, they changed my name on the chalkboard to Mr. McFarty. <laughs> Public party is just as unhinged as it was during the Trump years, if not more so. They're fully devoted to both Trump the man and the performance of Trumpism, whether it's lying about the election, accusing people of being secret communists, or staging deranged meltdowns on the House floor. It reminds me of something my very real and totally not imaginary friend once told me. He said, Kevin McCarthy- You're weak. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.